Hello friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 3, Ruined World. And welcome back to the city of Lorelei. I am at the random item shop, and he's got some interesting stuff here today. The Rune Shield offers pretty good defense for no encumbrance. And so could be a really good shield for Steven, or Connie, or even Peridot. I'm also going to buy an energy potion while I can, and it's pretty cheap. And I'm amused at the gold statue. I think this is the one I had a while back that summoned a gazer. That was fun. But now if I do a little inventory reshuffling, maybe Steven won't be limited to 3 AP quite so much. Maybe. We'll see. But since I still have scads of gold... This is not where I need to be to actually purchase Hawksmance. This is the mansion itself. Hello. Interested buyers should contact Lyle at Internal Affairs, right? Potentially I should spend some of my large amount of money on training but I think I'm waiting a little bit to, for that. Which one of you is internal affairs again? You are! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, missions. Those can be a good source of money sometimes. I could go to uh, Krizan very quickly indeed with the Amulet of Returning and then just teleport back here. I think I might do that. Uh, Lost Isle and Carnal, no thanks. Slay a cave slime, assuming I could still find one that wouldn't run. Assuming I could still find one that would not run from me. Lumok, the innkeeper of the City of Moon. That's not too far away. It also doesn't pay super great. But you mentioned you have a mansion to sell. Hawk's Mance, a beautiful mansion at the northwest corner of town. A bargain at only 8,000 gold. <laughs> he is clearly impressed. You pay him the 8,000 gold. Only half of my current gold total. <laughs> in return, he gives you a simple iron key. Hawk's Mance is in the northwest corner of town. Enjoy your new home. Yay. We are now the bourgeoisie. You stand at the front door of your new home, Hawk's Mance. It's a beautiful but imposing structure, old and distinguished. Enter. Oh, whole separate map. You walk for the first time into your new home. You see a beautiful foyer with an arching roof and a tiled marble floor. You pause for a moment to appreciate the splendor of it all. Your adventures have truly paid off. Then, suddenly, an old woman walks into the foyer, humming and pushing a broom. She looks you over, unimpressed, and says, Oh great, more people to mess up my nice floors. She walks by, into the dining hall to the north. Mm, there's a nice little chapel here. And a library. You look through the books, hoping some sort of valuable scroll or tome is among them. Instead, you find tedious fiction, dictionaries, and outdated encyclopedias. Looks nice, at least. And the book is Weaponry of the Realm. That is not information I need anymore. All of statues. Okay then. And windows. Presumably none of these statues will talk. This is the spare bedroom. If you want, you can have guests over. Yay! 
This is the main bedroom. It's large and tastefully decorated. There's only one bed, but the room also contains plenty of cushions and such, so you can all sleep comfortably. Do you rest? Not right now, no. Ooh, heated bedroom. Very nice. And a walk-in closet. The lands of the Empire. The Empire, blessed power over us all, controls the four known continents. Izo, the oldest, is the birthplace of the Empire, although the ruling seat is now on the continent of Pralgad. Vantanas is the smallest continent, but in many ways the richest, with its hot climate, fascinating fauna, and rich stores of gold and diamonds. And finally, there is the recently settled Valorum, which has a wild, though controlled, spirit. Yeah, not, not doing so hot on the control right now, huh? Oh look, pants! And empty space. You are at the entrance to a secret passage between the two bedrooms. You aren't sure why it's here, but you're sure the reason was very interesting. Ho ho ho! And a chest. Which is not trapped, but mostly has rocks and garbage. And a single potentially interesting potion. Since I'm investigating all of the books, might as well. Knight of the Bloodfang. I think I did read this at some point, but points for the name Chad Hardslab. Reminds me of the good old days of uh, generating a new pilot in an escape velocity. Ooh, very large fancy ballroom. A bow and arrows for some reason. Probably just generic arrows. Dining hall. Hallway. Big storage room. Very large kitchen and pantry. Another walk-in closet. Another secret passage. With nothing in it but garbage. And the person who was in the dining hall has escaped. There you are. You meet the elderly, crabby woman who greeted you when you first entered your house. She's busy dusting. Hi, boss. I'm Marjorie. She straightens up proudly to her full five feet of height. I'm the caretaker for Hawk's Mance. Yep, I have to be here. Because of the curse, you see. Uh, curse? The curse has been in place for many years. Nobody knows who caused it, or what the effects would be. All we know is that, if Hawk's Mance ever doesn't have a caretaker, horrible things would happen. She looks at you smugly. So I have to be here. Get used to it. Okay. I, I like having someone else to take care of the cleaning of stuff. Yes, this is it. Built 60 years ago by the Master. Feel free to stay here any time. Also, if you leave your items here, I can guarantee they'll be safe. Very generous of her, considering it's your home. <laughs> okay, I don't think there's anything else I can talk to her about right now. So yeah, we've got a big fancy house. And I'm going to drop my very important pieces of paper down here. Actually, maybe not that one just yet. Uh, 
I could also drop my very important gray mold and a uh, steel broadsword. Mostly keeping the extra sword for uh, potential future enchantment purposes. Do you walk back out into the cold, unwelcoming world? Yeah, sure. I may have to turn off the option that repeats area descriptions. Horsies! So now that we've got a very cool home base, I've explored Bangaro and Palsbo and Delston. I could go up to Appleton and Bremerton, or I could go the other way around Malak and Dorngas. I think I'm going to go exploring this away and eventually swing back up north and try to find the place with the black halberd again. But first, getting to know more of our new countrymen. Okay, so Malak is itty bitty. and has at least one person in the inn that will talk to me. You meet a middle-aged woman, deep into her fourth tankard of ale. She looks blearily up at you. I'm Mia. I'm drowning my sorrows. Why shouldn't I? In memory of my poor child. My poor son, lost fishing on Lake Tomor. His boat went out and hasn't returned. Oh, for something to remember him by. I gave him a silver ring, a family heirloom. Oh, what I would give to have it back again. Hmm. That sounds like a side quest. Sounds like she doesn't have any more dialogue. And the innkeeper is one of the boring ones. Mia might be the only interesting thing around this town. Oh no, I was wrong. There's a library. With a nephil in it. Fascinating. You meet the trainer of Malok. He's an educated Nephilim, a rarity in the cities of the Empire, or anywhere. He sits patiently and alertly, ready to increase your skills. I am Mr. He purrs. I am the trainer of Malok. I don't have many other interests, really. His whiskers twitch. I have so many other skills to master. Don't really have much time for hobbies. Someone didn't feel like writing much dialogue here, huh? But meanwhile, I can get Pearl's alchemy up to a actually useful level. That's all that I'm going to do on screen for now. Malloc's fine tools. Hey Mary, how's it going? This Mary sells crap I don't need. This door is locked. But not for long. Hi. Talent's person is much too shocked by my sudden entry. Oh no, ogres, whatever shall I do? You come across a band of giants, probably going to throw more boulders at Lorelei. They decide, for a change of pace, to throw them at you instead. Suckers. Boy, I love having uh, high-level spells. Also, something I forgot to mention. At some point, I found a Helm of Speed. <laughs> it grants occasional haste status. It is wonderful. And, oh yes, there is a 
forward around here I could have used. Anyway, Lake Tomor is this very large body of water in the center of the continent. And what's this? Someone had the misfortune to die out here, and was placed in a quickly built cairn. Later, wolves tore it apart. The result is a wrecked burial mound and bones scattered all over the landscape. You also find a silver necklace. Okay. Orb! Huh. This island is very creepy. It's covered with lots of dead things. Dead humanoid things. Far, far more than one would expect. Then the dead things shakily get up and stagger towards you in order to invite you to join them. Ruby skeletons, quick gasps, and spirits. Ooh. This is perhaps not the best time for using simulacrum, because I want to make sure I don't uh, get confused between who's friendly and who's not. Is this the best place to use Wall of Blades? Maybe not yet. Absolutely not a good place to use Wall of Ice. Uh, let's see if they cluster around a bit more. Yaha. the ruby skeletons are immune to fire. Oh, I can't cast there because that space has a tree. Wait, if the ruby skeleton is undead, I probably can't ice bolt it. I could use a kill spell, but that feels like a overkill. <laughs> Albert it is. Oh, I see. My line of sight is obstructed by a tree. gone slightly better. There is something hidden from me on that corner. Or maybe not. But there is something over here. On the shore of this small isle, you find the wreckage of a boat. It looks like it was blasted by a fireball, floated to this island, and was beached. Darn you, ruby skeletons! A quick search reveals a scattering of bodies, and some rotten fish. On a hunch, you look closer. One of the sailor's bodies wears a nondescript silver ring. ker -yoink. Yeah, does that show up in special items, or my inventory... Or is it one of those rare, mysterious things that only shows up in event flags? Hmm. 
I don't see any other islands in uh, range of my orb. So I will take a quick jaunt back to Maloc and fill in my map a bit more while doing so. Oh, hello! You see a bard, a wandering entertainer. However, her act is truly unlike anything you've ever seen. She is creating colored, wraith-like magical lights and making them dance before you. The lights pirouette before her. My name is Lost. I am called Foxfire. I make beauty. She makes the colored lights fly and dance in a wondrous, intricate pattern. It's truly hypnotizing. At last, alas, the show ends for the moment. She says, My faith inspires me to bring people joy. Alas, to bring people more joy requires food for me. May I have a coin? But of course. She thanks you sincerely utters a prayer, and begins to make the lights dance again. I feel like I'm supposed to get something else from this fox fire, but I don't remember how to get it. But she is a wandering bard who will show up in some of these small towns around Lorelei. You give Mia the silver ring you found on the shipwreck on Lake Tomor. She throws her arms around your neck in thanks. At last, I have a memory of him! She sits back down, drinking and looking at the ring. So, hooray! Our good deed for the day is done. Makes up for all the looting and uh, potentially unlawful entering of people's homes. Hello? Empire Patrol! Yay! Square of Trees. Hmm. I think not every square of trees has something within it. But one must check. is to the north, Malak is to the south. Dorngas should also be somewhat northward. A small farm is struggling to get by out here, many miles from the nearest settlement. When you get close, its owner walks out and looks you over. He motions for you to approach. Do you? When you get close to the man, you see his simple farmer's garb actually has fine gold thread runes woven into it. He's actually a mage. He greets you and introduces himself as Toras. He invites you in for lunch, and you talk for a bit about the state of things in the area. The most significant thing he says is that the keep of Tinraya was to the northwest. However, it has been quarantined and walled off. When you ask why, Tora says that the keep was overwhelmed by a plague of monsters, hideous six-legged beasts that tore the town apart. The Empire built a huge magical wall around the place to keep the beasts in before they spread. Eventually, Taurus completes the tale and says he needs to return to work. You bid him farewell and depart. Interesting. Not finding anything else of interest along the lake shore here. Oh my! Shadows pass overhead. You look up, only to see several strange clouds. Each has several eyes floating in it, 
each of which looks down at you. They emit a strange keening sound. Then they descend to attack. Well, that almost makes them sound like biblic biblically accurate angels, doesn't it? <sighs> you know what's even worse than gazers? And eye beasts? Gazers and eye beasts together. The eye beasts drain my spell points, and the gazers summon demons. Horrors. So much horrors. But hey, at least I'm not dead. Okay, Dorngast to the west. Quarantine lands, northwest. Fun times. More hill giants. I'll have to switch Amethyst back to Smite. enough to cure disease, and that's enough for me to feel safe resting. Great. Googly moogly. Hmm. Here's some territory I've seen before, kinda. Ah, here's a big mess of something. In this isolated copse of trees, you stumble upon a cottage. The sign in front says, Vlosto the Archer. Lessons at reasonable rates. You knock on the door, and are greeted by Vlosto. He's a Nefarim, a member of a subbreed of the Nephilim. Larger, but sterile. He welcomes you in for ale, which you try, and roast giant rat, which you have doubts about. But Amethyst probably enjoys. He explains that he can increase the archery skills of those who are not already too trained in it. A lesson for one of you will be a mere 3,000 gold. Do you train? Sure, why not? Archery skill already too high. Okay. So uh, if I want anybody else to develop some archery skill, I can do that. Okay. Bit of a mountain range around here. Oh, and this is... A sign telling me where Lorelei, Kalok, and Marish, and Wainscotting are. <laughs> Wainscotting, 100 miles west, more or less. And this is Dorngas. I'll be back here in a moment. A platoon of Empire soldiers, nervous and alert, comes near you. They don't approach or say anything. They only look you over and move off quickly. Their weapons were drawn and bows were knocked. Whatever they're looking for, they're very nervous about it. Hmm. I mostly wanted to complete my exploration of the road before moving on to Dorngas. Anything interesting in the farm areas? You come across the ruins of a small farming community. A half dozen farms were clumped together here. Something destroyed them, however. The overgrowth indicates it happened at least six months ago. The terrifying thing is the huge force that was exerted on the sturdy stone buildings. They were smashed apart, as if someone had attacked each one with a battering ram. However, the stone shows claw marks. The buildings were torn apart by huge animals. Not by giants, apparently. And same message there. I'm beginning to appreciate this not-so-forested chunk of empty land. Okay, so yet another walled and heavily defended city out in the middle of who knows what dangers. 
and some sort of sage, perhaps. You meet a sage, busily at work writing and revising reports and drawings. You look at the drawings. They're all of a bizarre-looking beast with eight legs. He looks up from his work, and self-consciously wipes some ink from his fingers. I am Ray. Have a seat. Don't ask about the spelling. Well, I'm the town sage. That's how I make my living. But to be honest, right now I'm preoccupied with my research. I sell little bits of info, on farming and such. Nothing interesting. However, I can also do identification. Identification is useful. Ooh, 50 gold per item. I've got a necklace. And I've got a potion. And that is actually all I have to identify right now. Strong healing, okay. And just a silver necklace. That probably won't even sell for enough to cover the 100 gold on identification. Oh well. Yes, I am trying to find out as much as I can about the alien beasts that threaten us all. Yes, that's what they're called. We can think of no better name. You'd know one if you saw one. Five feet high at the shoulder, six legs, pure muscle, and utterly lethal. And apparently some uh, differing reports if the drawing you had had eight legs. It was them who managed to destroy the Keep of Tinraya. The Keep of Tinraya was to the north. It was the mightiest and well-defended city in Valorum. Its walls were thought to be impregnable, until a hundred of the alien beasts found their way inside. Not many survived. It's a sad tale, but for once, the Empire reacted correctly. It was a brilliant move. Footracer Province, in which the keep was surrounded by a wall. Footracer Province, in which the keep was, was surrounded by a wall. A dozen wizards came from the Empire and cast many spells on the wall, so that instead of keeping invaders out, it held the monsters in. Unfortunately, this is a temporary solution. Walls crumble. Spells fade. The beasts are still in there. If something is not done, they'll get out and keep spreading. Hopefully, someone in Black Crag Fortress will figure out what to do soon. They are the ones who determine who gets in and out of Footracer Province. They are the ones who determine our fate. Unfortunately, they have withdrawn. Nobody has been in or out of there for months. Valorum is quarantined off. Some fear we've been abandoned to our fate. He shakes his head. So I study the alien beasts and look for a weakness. And to be honest, I don't think there is one. Well, that's not quite true. We do have the Beast Slayer Blade. Which is on Pearl, that's right. But still, that's not one that a whole lot of people can exploit. Mini bratwurst. All the fine taste of regular bratwurst, but with less bent over howling and retching afterwards. <laughs> oh, joy. So, sounds like you've got some cocktail weenies? Aw, you advertise mini bratwurst, but all you have is dried mushrooms and roast chicken. And you have sheep! Hello? You're just a regular townsperson. Yep, oh, and you are a beggar. Who also isn't responding. Darn, beggars usually have something a little more interesting to give me, information-wise. North Barracks. Stay alert, the beasts may arrive at any moment. And one particular black beast has just hopped up in my lap again. Okay, standard barracks. South Barracks, same thing. As you start to step through the door, you notice the floor on the other side looks slightly suspicious. This is probably not worth it. Uh, 
Connie can't pick locks. Uh, what? Ew. Maybe I'll just hope that guardians can't open doors. A child. Gas missile weapons when you don't even want them to see you. Okay, generic Fletcher. But she does sell iron bolts. I am a little low on those. Ah, that is not a generic innkeeper, he just has the sprite for one. You meet the innkeeper, a short, stout man with lots of hair coming out of everywhere. He seems on edge. I'm Radowitz. Running this in, while it survives anyway. I can give you a room for only three gold. Good rate. Also, for what little they're worth, I sell maps. Yeah, I used to do good business selling maps of Footracer Province to the north, to passing caravans. Then the alien beast destroyed the whole place. Now my maps are useless. You can purchase one for only a gold. How's that for a price? Sure. He gives you a map, pausing to blow the dust off it. Also, I will take a room, why not? I am feeling slightly toasty. He looks relieved. After the alien beasts came, nobody who can help it comes up here. Glad I can finally rent a room. He shows you to a clean, slightly dusty room. Yay. I sense secret passage. Uh. Interestingly, the inn has a small hidden passage leading in and out of the town. Whatever purpose it was built for, you are willing to bet it wasn't legal. Well, la di da. Okay, I've once again been recording for a decent chunk of time, so. I will take care of my dumbfounding and see you all next time. Until then, have a good one, everybody.